When I think of the word tall, one of the things that comes to my mind are mountains. Mountains are pretty tall. But here's a question. How high can they get? Do you think they can be as tall as they want? There's nothing limiting that? Or do you think something might limit the maximum height a mountain can ever achieve? To answer this question, we need to focus not at the top of the mountain, but at the bottom of the mountain. So if we take, say, a small chunk of the mountain, so if we take, if we zoom in over here and concentrate on a small chunk of a mountain, say we look at a rock, then this rock is being pressed by the weight of the mountain on top of it. What happens to a rock when you press it? Well, when we press it in our hands, since the forces are very tiny, it feels like the rock is not being deformed. But the rock gets deformed, microscopic deformations. And under such horrendous forces, the forces over here, is la large forces over here, the, the deformations are quite significant. And we have studied a lot about what happens when you deform materials, when you strain them. We've seen that within elastic limits, the material just snaps back. But if the strain is very high, then the material won't snap back anymore. Instead, it'll start flowing like a liquid. And we've talked a lot about this when we, when we spoke about the stress strain graph in previous videos. So if you need a refresher, it would be a great idea to go back and watch that and then come back over here. But the important thing over here is that if the forces, so there are forces acting on this rock from all directions, and if these forces go beyond the elastic limits, then this rock no longer maintains its shape, it starts flowing like a fluid. And as a result, if the bottom part of, this, of the mountain starts flowing or starts behaving like a liquid, it'll start flowing away like this, and the mountain will start sinking. And it's for that reason, there must be a maximum height above which the mountain will just start sinking under its own weight. So yeah, a maximum height exists. Now, can we calculate that? That seems like a very challenging question. I mean, there could be so many details involved. What kind of mountain we're dealing with, what kind of stress we're dealing with, and all that stuff. However, we can sort of make an order of magnitude, magnitude estimate based on what we've just learned. So if you look at rocks like this, it turns out that their elastic limit, elastic limit, is roughly, roughly around three times 10 to the power eight newtons per meter square. And this is like an average value of the stuff that usually mountains are made of. So again, it's very close to that. And so we know that if the pressure over here exceeds this value, and we can pretty much say our mountain is going to sink down. So all we need to know now is figure out what is the pressure over here. Again, that is a little bit challenging because the mount, because of the shape of the mountain and, and all, all those uh, complications are involved over there. But we can simplify that by assuming, by assuming our mountain to be made of a cylinder. Now I know. I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say that's ridiculous, but that's what we do in physics. We make such ridiculous assumptions. I mean, we make assumptions like this to make the math easier. And we would say, well, okay, the final answer may not be accurate, but we sort of get an order of magnitude estimate. We get an approximate, you know, some ballpark figure, all right? So if we assume our, mount, uh, our mountain to be a perfect cylinder, and let's say the cylinder has a height h, height h. Now can we calculate what will be the pressure at the bottom? Well, yes, now we can do that. The pressure at the bottom would be the force that this whole mountain is putting, the cylinder is putting at the bottom, the force, and that would be the weight of that cylinder, cylindrical mountain, divided by the area, the area that we're considering. Now, since we don't know what the mass of the stuff that's made of over here, we could write mass as density times volume of the cylinder, density times volume, but the volume is just height times the area. And so the pressure pretty much, I shouldn't write equal to, I, I should put here approximation, these are approximations, approximately rho g h. So if this pressure exceeds this number, then there's a good chance our rocks will start flowing and the mountain will sink. And so that's how we can figure out what's the maximum value of h. So we'll just say the pressure at the bottom, rho g h, should be less than, less than the elastic limit, 
elastic limit of the materials over here. All right, we know what g is, that's the acceleration due to gravity, height is something we need to calculate, density, another thing that we don't know. Again, density depends on which material we're dealing with, but we could say, okay, this is solid. Density of water is 1,000, and solids are usually denser than water. And so we could say, okay, density must be more than 1,000. Some solids have density 2,000, 3,000, some can even have 5,000. A good way to pick a number over here is you look on the right-hand side and say, look, there's a three over there. So just to cancel things out and keep our number simple, we'll assume our density to be 3,000, right? Again? So, so we're gonna take density to be, I, I don't think people do it this way, but anyways, we could say pretty much density is about 3,000 kilograms per meter cube. I'm not gonna put the limit, uh, uh, the units over here, this is 3,000. G is 10. Oh, let me use a different color for this. 10. And the height that we want, well that's H, then that should be less than three times 10 to the power eight, eight meters. So if we cancel things, the three cancels, that's the reason we chose that, and we have four zeros, and we have four zeros over here, cancel, and so H turns out to be less than about 10 to the power four meters, or H becomes less than 10 kilometers. Now we know that this is not a very accurate answer because of all the approximations that we did, but a good way to see how close we are is by looking at a list of all the tallest mountains of the world. And so if you go to Wikipedia, it's showing me now the tallest mountains of the world and their heights over here. Mount Everest has about 8.8, .8, this is in meters, this is in feet. Uh, we look at meters, about 8.8 .8 kilometers. And if you look at all the other tall mountains, then you'll see that their heights are pretty much between eight to nine kilometers. I don't know about you, but I am feeling very good, very good about our rough calculations. It's unbelievable that we got this number. But there was one mountain which was not listed in that, and that is Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus has a height of, so let me just write it down, Mount Olympus. Olympus. Mount Olympus has a height of 25 kilometers. And you'll be like, what? Way taller than Everest? Yes, it's not listed because it's on Mars, all right? So this thing is on Mars. But here's the big question. Why is the mountain on Mars so much taller than whatever estimate we did over here? I mean, we saw this is a pretty good estimate. And the physics should be pretty much the same whether you're doing it on Earth or Mars, right? So where do you think, what do you think would be different in, these cal in this calculation if we were doing it on Mars. Think about it.